What is going on guys? So I'm really excited about this video because I've been working on it for a while. Now you've all probably seen these uh, little fog machines in Halloween stores or whatnot. And I mean they do give off a nice puff of smoke. Uh, but I wanted a machine capable of delivering a tsunami of smoke that could be used for special effects in movies, shows, concerts. So in this video... Oh, I'll be making this bad boy. This is a 4.5 kilowatt monster. And it only cost a few euros to make. So let's dive right into it. So first of all, let's take a look at how a fog machine actually works. So this is a typical 800 watt machine I've had for years, and I believe this particular machine cost me around 100 euros. So as you can see, there's really not much to it. So every fog machine is pretty much made up of three different parts. You've got a reservoir containing fog liquid, which is essentially a glycerin-based solution that evaporates into thick white steam when heated over 175 degrees Celsius. I got 5 litres of it for 20 euros. Now it is possible to make some yourself for a lot cheaper and I'll definitely make a tutorial on that in the future, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. A pump is then used to force the liquid from the reservoir through a heating block which evaporates the liquid into thick white steam. Now the heating block is simply a tube rolled into a coil around a heating element. The heat is transferred from the element to the coil through cast aluminium. This little thermal switch turns off the heating element when the block reaches 260 degrees Celsius. If it didn't, the block would rapidly heat up to 660 degrees, which would result in a, a disaster. This is just a little insulation that helps the block maintain its heat. This is the controller. The switch simply activates the pump and the LEDs indicate when the heating block is hot enough. And that's all there is to it. So I reverse engineered the wiring and this is the diagram I got. Okay, so let's get started. So first off, I needed to make the heating block. Now, flexible copper tubing is really expensive. So I decided to uh, get some from the heat exchangers you find at the back of old refrigerators. So I went to my local tip and I picked up four of these. Uh, the only issue was that I had to separate the tubing from the metal grid. So after a lot of drilling and a lot of peeling, I ended up with at least 40 meters of perfectly usable copper tubing. Next, I rolled it into a coil using a PVC tube as a former. Next, I needed a heating element. I got a few 1.5 kilowatt water heaters off eBay for 16 bucks. Now, the higher the wattage, the faster the block will heat up before it reaches 260 degrees, but that's it. It will not actually affect how much smoke is being produced. This will be positioned in the center of the coil like so. And to hold everything together, I used an aluminum tube. Oh, and by the way, ignore that piece of metal, I ended up not needing it. Instead of having one pump and one heating element, I decided to make three for triple the power. Now for the fun part. Like we saw earlier, the whole assembly needs to be drowned in molten aluminium to allow the heat to transfer from the heater to the coil. So I used my simple improvised metal foundry to melt recycled aluminium from cans and old aluminium parts. And I was even kindly given an aluminium ingot by my university. So while that was melting, I dug a hole in the ground and I used sand to hold everything in place. Next, I filled up the three tubes with molten aluminium. As you can see, I didn't really do a good job at that, but I was so terrified I just wanted to get it over with. Okay, now the more aluminium is being used, the longer it will take the heating block to heat up, but the longer it will take for it to cool down below 175 degrees, so the longer the machine can run. And voila! three heating blocks ready to be used. Next, I needed a thermal switch to prevent the block from essentially self-destructing. So I went and got those off eBay for a few bucks and I decided to go with the same thermal threshold as the ones used in the small fog machine, so 260 degrees. And I secured them with some wire. Next, I needed a pump. I was originally going to make a peristaltic pump, but then I decided it was just way easier to buy cheap oil pumps off, again, eBay, for a few dollars. And these are actually replacement pumps for fog machines, so perfect! These ones use 31 watts, and the stronger the pump, the more liquid will be evaporated, so the bigger the cloud. Finally, it was time to assemble all the parts into one machine. After laying out the components to make sure everything fit nicely on the piece of MDF wood, 
And after a lot of drilling and screwing, I had everything secured in place. Next, I wrapped the heating blocks in some rockwool insulation to help them maintain their heat. So, I used rockwool because it's uh, heat resistant and it won't, um, you know, catch fire. Once I was done with all the plumbing, it was time to work on the wiring. Here's the uh, wiring diagram I went with. Next, I made a simple controller using a switch and a small lamp to indicate when the heater reached 260 degrees, so it can't fire prematurely. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's ready to go. So I accidentally ordered uh, 110 volt pumps, and here in France we use 220 volts. So I simply used an old transformer to step down the voltage. And we're done, so let's go outside and test it out. So first of all, let's uh, fire up the machine we took apart earlier as a reference point. So as you can see, it's not too bad, but it just doesn't pack enough punch, especially outdoors. Now let's test the homemade one. So this isn't my first attempt at making a fog machine, in fact it's my third. The first one I made didn't use enough aluminium as a heating block, which meant that it could only run for a few seconds before it started spitting out an evaporated fog liquid. The second one wasn't too bad, but it used a single 4 kilowatt heater to heat up one heating block containing the three coils. Now the problem with this one is that the, uh, the coil on the inside was way shorter than the coil on the outside, which isn't ideal. Also, I, I accidentally uh, ruined the whole thing by drilling a hole right through one of the tubes, which created an unrepairable leak. So I recently took part in a uh, special effects show, and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to show it off. Oh, and this, this is a special smoke perfume that gives the smoke a lovely strawberry smell. And here's a clip from the show. Et pomper ce liquide dans un élément chauffant. Donc cet élément, la machine fait maison et regardez le résultat. Donc c'est vrai que ça en fait quand même beaucoup de fumée. Hein. Fait maison, bah, c'est ce qu'on peut faire donc en fabrication maison. Alors je sais pas où vous êtes. Si on me voit encore, bah, je vous vois plus. Hein. Ah c'est bon, vous êtes tous là. And finally, I just simply couldn't resist the urge to uh, fire it up indoors, so I tested it in my super tidy workshop. Within a matter of seconds, I couldn't even see one foot in front of me. Now, remember, this is only evaporated water and glycerin, so it's non-toxic and I had no trouble breathing at all. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and exciting news, I was featured on FXSP to talk about portable effects such as portable fog machines, flamethrowers, and confetti cannons. So definitely check out their channel, they have some amazing stuff. And if you liked the video, please leave a like, it really helps. And I shall see you guys next time.